In a previous video I did, five ways to live stream, I mentioned how easy it was to bring in live guests and also bring in your chat uh, into as an overlay into your live streams using StreamYard, Ecamm Live, and even vMix. I did mention that you can use OBS, but you, it requires third-party software and some setup in OBS. In this video, I'm gonna go over how you can bring in a live guest into OBS. And in a future video, I'll go over how you can bring in the chat overlay into your live production. Let's get into it. OBS or the Open Broadcaster software is a very powerful and free software traditionally used by live streamers to live stream to Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and other platforms. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can bring in live guests into your live production or your recorded video using OBS. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, everyday tech for everyday people. Now something like StreamYard makes it really easy to bring in a guest, but if you saw my last video, the problem with StreamYard is the quality is not quite there. And if you wanna get better quality, you do have to pay for it. Ecamm Live and vMix are also really good pieces of software with really good quality, easy to bring in guests, but that does cost money. Now OBS is absolutely free, absolutely very powerful, but it does take some setting up to do and it does require some third-party software. So the software I'm gonna demo for you today is Video Ninja. Now Video Ninja is a web-based software, very powerful software that allows you to kind of create these kind of video conference rooms and bring that kind of video conference into OBS in, for your live production or your video production. I'm gonna show you how we set it up in Video Ninja and how we set it up in OBS. After that, I'm gonna play you a clip from the other night of my live stream and how I brought in my guest into my live production. And then I asked my guest to tell about her experience of being a guest and using Video Ninja for the first time. So here we are in Video Ninja and I'm not gonna go through all the features of Video Ninja because there's tons of them. But for our purposes, we're gonna be creating a room. Now creating a room allows us to interact with the guests that are coming in. And actually you can have multiple guests come into a single room. Now, if you just wanted to add a single video source, let's say I wanted to use my phone as an overhead cam or as a secondary cam in OBS, then I can actually have my phone go to Video Ninja, add itself as a camera, and I can bring that camera using the browser source into my OBS production. But here we're gonna create a room and we're gonna create a room for multiple people or at least one or more people to join including ourselves. So let's go ahead and create a room for our demo here. And I'm gonna call this Everyday Tech Demo. And we're gonna put the password as password. Now with these options here, guests can only see the director's video. That means if you have multiple guests coming in and you only want them to see you, maybe they're just coming in one at a time, but you don't necessarily need them to interact with each other. That's one way to do it. And then the other thing is director will be performing, appearing in the scenes. This means the director, that means us, who's the one creating the rooms, has the option of being in the production. Now this is kind of cool because you can bring in multiple guests and actually be the director, but not be in your video production. That way you can control all the scenes in OBS, bringing in the guests or bringing in the different speakers. They can interact with each other if they wanted to, but you are just worried about doing all the overlays, all the transition in OBS. So here we're just gonna create the room and we're gonna have ourselves be in the scene as well. So we've created the room, and now we need to do two things. First, we need to invite the guest, so we can send them this link here, and then we have to let them know the password, because this, this doesn't contain the password. And then even though we said that the director would be performing or would be in the production, we need to actually enter into the room itself. So that can easily be done by hitting this enable director's microphone and video. And we're gonna go ahead and it'll bring up the source here. And we're gonna choose our video here as the Blackmagic design. We can choose our audio sources here. And this, this is the way that the guests can interact with you. They're not gonna actually hear the production or the audio that's coming from OBS. This is the interface that you have and the communication that you have with you and your guests. So that's the important concept here. OBS is what's going out to the internet. 
and it's taking in all the feeds in from Video Ninja. But Video Ninja itself is the one place where you're actually interacting with your guests back and forth. So we added ourselves into our room and now we need to add our guests. So I've already sent the link and the password to my guest, which is on my laptop here. And I'm gonna go ahead and join the room here. So as you can see, this is on my laptop right now. As I enter in, you'll, it'll prompt me for a password. So I'm gonna type in our very secure password here. And it's gonna go ahead and let me share my screen or join with my camera. And so this is kind of nice to screen share. Let's say you just want to share whatever whatever is on your laptop. This is an easy way to kind of share what's on your laptop or on another computer. Just have someone join. So we're going to go ahead and join with the camera. And if I didn't join before, it'll tell me to prompt and give permission. But I've already given permission to add in my um, camera and uh, audio device here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And right now I am sending video and you can see it on my main computer here. You can't hear it because I, I'm not bringing it into OBS right now. And also, as you can see right here, I have this uh, muted. And so basically I should be able to hear myself uh, or interact with somebody uh, if I have this unmuted. So really you could potentially use this as uh, kind of a chat room with somebody without even using OBS. But the purpose of Video Ninja is to bring it into OBS at, for your production here. Okay, so now that we have this kind of nice chat room that we can talk to our guests and there, there can be multiple guests here. But now the purpose of doing this is we wanna bring this into our OBS production here. So the way we do that is we're gonna grab this individual solo link and every guest will have their individual link and we're gonna bring that into OBS right now. This is your typical setup in OBS right now. You have your main scene, you have a video capture device, which is now my main uh, device here, which is my Blackmagic A10 Mini. But right now I wanna do a scene like this, but just with my guest. So I have the URL, the solo link, cop, uh, in my clipboard right now. So we're gonna create a new scene with just our guest here. And we're gonna call this, we're gonna add a source here, or call this guest one scene. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a browser input here. We're gonna call this guest one. And we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste the solo link from Video Ninja. And we're gonna go ahead and put this as 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And eventually what should show up is the window or the video from my laptop. My laptop is the one that just joined the Video Ninja room. So right now we do have the window in here. Now, one thing that I forgot to check was the audio. And so right now, I don't know if the audio is coming in. So now let's go back into properties with Video Ninja. And we're going to say have control audio via OBS. We're going to click OK. And our browser is back now. And now we're getting levels for our guest here. So if I snap here, it's picking up directly from my laptop's audio source here. So now I can monitor what my guests or the audio levels for my guests here. And this is gonna be important later on in this demo. But another thing I'm gonna do is do a side-by-side -side kind of scene. And I've already created it and I'm have my main video capture right here, and I'm gonna add my guest into here. Now this is a free template that I got from Doc Rock here. Um, he has these free overlays, and so I, I'll put a link in, that in the description below there. But here, I'm gonna go ahead and add another browser here, and we're gonna add an existing guest one here. Go ahead and click that, and we're gonna go ahead and kind of Go ahead and resize this here. And then we're gonna go into here and put it under the overlay. And actually I'm gonna put it under the other video capture so I don't have to do any cropping as far as that's concerned. And now we have a side-by-side -side view here. I can adjust the sizes here. One thing I like to point out is this matter of guest or the guest audio levels here. And one thing you'll notice is if when I switch to my main scene here, that guest audio levels disappears which means that when I switch this scene, you may not be able to hear my guests, even if they speak. 
And that's maybe not what I want. Maybe you do, but this is not, in my case, I don't want it. So only when I go to the side-by-side -side view where the guest browser is in there, or the guest source is in there, or my guest scene here, uh, you'll be able to hear the levels. So you can see the levels going. But when I go to my main screen here, you won't be able to hear the guests. So what we have to do is, let's go ahead and add our guest here. We're gonna add an existing browser here. We're gonna just hit okay. But you know, this is a, the main scene for just seeing my own video. So what we can do is bring this layer just below this video layer here. And so now you only get to see me, but if my guest speaks, you'll be able to hear my guest right now as well. I sent you a link and I purposely didn't test it out before mm -hmm. the stream because I just wanted to see how your experience was. So I sent you a link and of course I, I forgot to send you the password and you messaged me right away. I, I literally sent it to you yeah. maybe 10 minutes before the show. And then yeah. I told you, click on when you see the countdown. So That's what was right your in. experience coming out? So I enjoy the fact that it is actually private protected with a password. Uh, that's a nice general experience because when I'm using, let's say, StreamYard, that's not a feature that's included. So people just pop up backstage. But to give somebody the privacy of knowing that you have a password protection, I like that feature. It's just a nicer component. Not just anybody can come onto the live stream with you, only people that you grant permission. So that was a plus. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I got on it, uh, after the password was entered, it gave me the option of adjusting my settings. So what I noticed and I was playing around with them a few times is there's different ones for like the camera. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the exact terminology for it, but it was like the top notch feature. But that one versus the defaulted one, the defaulted one was a lot more nicer quality. Mm -hmm. So I found that to be a bit funny, but as you know, I popped on and my screen was reversed. Yeah. So when so everybody that's currently seeing me right now on the re, on the replay or the live stream with you sees me the way I show on my live streams. Mm -hmm. But the backstage area has my screen flipped the opposite way around. So it's a little bit trippy to see that dynamic. It's HD quality from what I can figure out. So it looks good. Mm -hmm. uh then it was a little bit funny like so the audio too by the way could choose my audio so that was fine it defaulted to my default but then it's true what you said so what's really cool is i can see your countdown timer going as you had the countdown timer it shows that you were on air because you're casting on youtube but it was just you on air but then when you brought me into the mix what was cool about it is, so right now on my screen, I have me flipped the way mm -hmm. that I'm not used to. And on the side, I have yourself with your overlays, myself in the overlay, but I'm flipped back to the way that I'm used to. So just like anybody would see on YouTube. So that part is really cool. So basically she sees herself twice, but yes. mirrored, but I'm gonna show you my control center here. And this is what I see. And okay, so the reason why she sees my screen here on the left side here is because that's what I'm sending to her. I'm sending her uh, that video, but because, and I'm sending her OBS virtual cam to back to her. So if I switch my settings here, uh, to my capture card, then she just sees me. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the main screen here. You don't see this, you don't see, all you see is me. Of course, you can have a YouTube video, a window on the side and That's actually right. see that. And, but she only sees me now. And this could be a good thing for, um, for conversation, you know? Cause she will, she'll be less distracted this way. I think. Right. That's <laughs> uh, what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like if I bring up, uh, so Robert's asking, is this 1080 60? I'm sending it up at 1080 60. I, I believe cause, but that's an OBS setting. This hasn't to do with video, but I guess my point is here right now is she doesn't see the chat coming up in video ninja right now. That's correct. 
And so part of the reason why I'm going to, uh, I'm going to switch it back and oh, let me, let me switch back to my screen here. I'm going to switch it back to OBS virtual camera. And now she sees what the broadcast sees right now. So now she's back to double herself. Remember I made her really uncomfortable is because I made her full screen. <laughs> and when we go like this, now what does she see in video ninja? She sees both of her right now. Yeah. Mirrored. So, I literally see myself on one side, myself on the other, and it's, it's really trippy. <laughs> and the only th and you know, I think this is the same way it might be in StreamYard, right? I think if you bring up someone really big, at least you can see the guest on the side, but actually you see yourself really big. But you don't see yourself twice. <laughs> that's right. You don't see yourself twice. Not like this. Okay. Yeah. So that's the big difference. But, and I'll I'll take you off pretty soon. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but I can bring up the chat right in front of her as well. So that's kind yes. of like the I can advantage. see it now. So that's that's kind of in in here. We're back to normal, kind of. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you're great with this. Uh, so, but. You know, that's, those are the pros and cons with it as well. So let me talk about some of the things that Ash said concerning her experience with Video Ninja. First, she was talking about how the screen is, her video is a little bit mirrored or flipped on her side. So let me show you what a guest sees. A guest sees their own image on the left here that I see, and then the right image here is the main host or the director or other guests here. But if I bring this coaster up to the screen, you'll see that it's flipped. And that's, so that can be a little bit disorienting if you're not used to it. Now, for some reason, there's no uh, settings here to flip it back. So let's talk about the video I'm sending out to the guest and what I was sending out to Ash. Right now, I'm really just sending the feed from my main capture card here, which is my A10 Mini Pro, but I wanna send out what I'm sending out to the broadcast. The reason why I wanna do that is so that the guests can see the different layouts when they're focused, uh, they can actually see the comment, the chat come up on screen without sending out the virtual camera. All they see is this picture, which is not bad because you may be just having a conversation and you, you they may not care of seeing the comments or they have another window with the comments shown anyway. So let's see, show how we can change this. I'm going to go into my control center here. I'm going to change my camera from my Blackmagic design, which is my A10 Mini Pro into the OBS virtual camera. And so now, because I'm sharing this screen uh, on OBS, this is what the guest sees. So if I change to my main camera here, this is what the guest sees. So if I go to my laptop here right now, I'm seeing the normal view side by side, myself right here on the left side, and my main host computer, uh, host guest or host person is on the right side here. But if I do a side by side view, now, when I look at myself on here, what am I seeing? I'm seeing myself twice mirrored, right? Uh, over and over again. So I see myself on the left here, but I also see my side by side view. Now where it was getting uncomfortable for Ash and it gets a little bit trippy is if I do just myself here. And so now I'm seeing myself twice, but it's mirrored a little bit delayed on one end. And then also my pod mic here is uh, now a real funky mic here. So that can be a little bit disorienting. Again, we do this because we want to be able to show everything that's going on screen or all the chat messages that are coming up. Now, the other thing is when we were in the countdown, she couldn't hear the music in Video Ninja. And so I wasn't sending that audio back to her because so I could create a virtual, you know, and I've, I've done a, a video on loopback on the Mac and there's other things on the PC as well, but you have to do some virtual routing so that she can hear any kind of, you know, sound effects that I do in OBS or any kind of music I do in OBS. I could be really mean to her and just do some kind of sound effects on her and she wouldn't even know it because I'm not sending wah, that wah. audio back, or, back to her. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of one easy way to do it. So I'll say so, this much. This seems, except maybe how you have to set it up in the back end, mm -hmm. this layout I prefer more than, let's say, as a join as guest because I can't judge Ecamm because I don't have a Mac. Yeah. But join as a guest concept, which do I find 
more user friendly for the guests this this setup with the one exception is i can't see the live chat unless you do pull it up in mm -hmm. ecamm there's a the comment box and you can just pull it up or you have to have the youtube live stream open to see the yeah. comments hope you enjoyed this video this is just a quick tutorial on video ninja a real simple and powerful way to bring in live guests into your obs production now, I did mention a few things to watch out for, especially as what you're sending to your users as far as video and audio is concerned. Now, there are plenty of tutorials on OBS itself and Video Ninja itself as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.